Skakiorgi was created, um, well, it was, it was actually created during the war, actually, but it was never used. Um, until the Naginata Federation was re-established in the 1950s, and this is when shikakiorji was introduced as a as a practice method. Because before that, uh, Naginata was not usually practiced Naginata versus Naginata. It was usually Naginata versus a sword. Okay, um, so it's only in the post-war period in the 1950s when shikakiorji was introduced that it was Naginata versus Naginata. So Shikakiorji was uh, a long time before uh, the Zen Nihon Kata. After the war, after World War II, uh, martial arts in Japan, Budo was forbidden, prohibited. And so Naginata and other martial arts could not be practiced. And then Naginata's case, which was kind of like a piecemeal sort of process for various reasons, which, you know, I can, uh, can't really go into detail here. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it, the Shikakiorji, originally called Shikakiorji Kumiawase, um, coincides with the creation of the All Japan Naginata Federation. With the Kata, they were created uh, several decades later because the, the main motivation was, well, there was two motivations. One was to try and preserve some of the Naginata techniques that were being lost from the classical schools or traditions because they were disappearing. And one way to preserve some of the uh, representative techniques was to create a new set of kata, which takes uh, movements from the various schools that used to exist. And also uh, because Naginata was becoming very uh, competition oriented and striking and cutting or striking with a shiai naginata and cutting with a with a real naginata are actually very different things. So one way to preserve the kind of the theory uh, behind traditional naginata usage, as opposed to just learning how to win uh, win shiai and use techniques that aren't actually really real naginata techniques and shiai. Uh, one way to counter this prop uh, and and sort of preserve the naginata culture was to create this this kata. Um, and from the outset, in any case, um, the creation of Shikakiorji was not sort of like an overnight thing. It took a few years to develop. But when the All Japan Naginata Federation was inaugurated, uh, it was on the basis of these newly formed combinations of techniques, which were originally called uh, shikake oji kumiawase, yeah. um, which means shikake means attack, oji means counter, combinations. Okay, so this was almost uh, when it was, the, the forms were completed uh, up to hachi homme, um, coincided with the launch of the All Japan Naginata Federation. It was restricted uh, only to uh, Sandan and above. So people who already have a very fundamental grounding in Naginata then go on to learn the more sophisticated techniques in the kata, which make use of the various parts of the Naginata, uh, the sori, uh, the shinogi, the mine, uh, and the, and just the overall shape of uh, the subtleties that are often lost in in with the shiai naginata. So that's the history of it. Lots Best of course. other schools, lots. <laughs> <laughs> Not just ten There was uh, there was a number of senses from various schools that came together over a certain amount of time and they they ha held a number of committee meetings where they uh, examined uh, techniques from many different schools of Naginata. So Tendoryu, of course, uh, Jikshin, Kageryu, Yoshinryu, various other schools, uh, some of which do not exist anymore. Um, they made videos of the various techniques or videos film, I should say, uh, of the various techniques from these schools. Some of these schools don't exist anymore. And so this film, if somebody could find it, would be incredibly valuable as a record of Naginata because many of these schools don't exist now. 
And uh, the film used to be at the All Japan League and other federation, but it's, it's gone missing. So it's kind of like the Holy Grail in Naginata. If we could find the, that film, it would be really quite a, quite a remarkable uh, treasure to have. Based on the premise that this is Nidan Waza. Nidan Waza means, con uh, what do you call it, uh, consecutive techniques, but actually it's not Nidan Waza. It's not actually Nidan Waza. So, strike man to start with. And because it's blocked, that's why you do snare. You don't uh, set out with the intention of doing man snare. When you receive or you block with the habu against the furiagete sune, um, the, the position that you take is pretty much the same as gedan no kamai. So this is the, uh, the correct position that you should end up with, uh, with your, um, your back, elbow and, and front hand, etc. <coughs> So the movements are pretty much exactly the same as Ippomme, uh, same except the original targets are different, they've been reversed, that's the only difference. So there's, there's no real difference actually, um, the only difference is that in this, what you're doing here is you're not, it's not a kamai as such, it's a block. So depending on the situation you might have to uh, move it out a little bit further or pull it in a little bit, okay. Um, whereas kamai is, is the same all the time, but essentially, so, so the point is that you might have to make some little adjustments as you are moving, but uh, in principle the, the basic form that you should take when you make this block is pretty much the same as gedan. So we're going to start with the door strike and what we're aiming for is the, pretty much well, the height of the koshi ita. The, the board on your hakama. So, to lock the door, we use the sodi, the curve of the naginata on the blade to um, create the, the harai down and using that power from the harai that's generated through the curve of the blade um, without putting your own strength in it you immediately go into a pretty kaishi technique. So this is what it looks like from the front. So the body is going straight back and straight forward, but the naginata is uh, down to the side like this, okay, but the body is, is straight. And this is the important point. He's got to go past Sunet. So it's not stopping on Sunet, it's going past. Okay, so you've got to cut through. That's the, uh, one of the important points for, for Yong Hong Ne. And because of that, man is open, so Orgy strikes man as a counter attack, whereas Shkape does Kudi Komi to block it and stepping back 
as you do harai. Okay, not staying on the same point, but stepping back as you do harai, uh, then it's pretty close in there. Connection point where the waves are connecting over here. This is the exact point <laughs> that you're going to use the air through the harai. So it's the same point uh, that is making contact on both sides. So, uh, what I sense is saying is um, uh, your map, where you receive and how you receive. Uh, is really important for the the harai to work properly. So your body has to be in a very stable position, okay, with your bottom hand very stable. Okay, if uh, your body is not in a in a stable position and you don't have your bottom hand in the right place, then the harai afterwards is not going to be good. When you do the pull back, this hand is the same height as the shoulder. Okay, so that's how it's too much, it's not enough, it should be shoulder height, how much you pull it back. And try not to fall over. So the distance from the Ishizuki to the, the waves should be about 10 centimetres. So touching is no good, and too far away is no good. It should be about 10 centimetres away. That's where it ends up. Mm -hmm. The hand is not gripping tightly. The hand is actually kayuri. It's sliding through the maginata. They're making up the sliding through. Okay? That's, that's the important point here. Well, actually, um, it's probably hard to see. Uh, but in principle, orgy actually sort of initiates all of the movements and shikake sort of follows along. So actually orgy in a way takes a kind of a, a higher role in the shikake orgy techniques. It's not, it's not move and then move, but it's just the feeling is I'm going to move and that's why shikake moves. Okay. So actually it's, um, it's orgy who is, and all of the shikake oji, and all of them, uh, it's actually oji who really initiates the start of the techniques. So the energy to make this movement is coming from uh, the opponent's harai. Okay, so you're using that energy from their harai just to uh, go with the flow and end up in that position. We're not facing forwards, we're facing side on. Okay. So it's like this.
So you can see that uh, this is gohomme harai, and you're doing a harai to the side. Okay, nanohomme looks the same, but we're doing the harai down rather than to the side. So that's the first major difference. Apart from that, the movement is essentially the same. It's just out to the side or down. First door has been struck, and immediately Shikake goes in uh, a position to strike door again. When the second door comes, it's going to be the elbow that's in the way. So that's what's moved first. You're moving the elbow out of the way first, and your body follows back after that. So the, the correct way means you've got to hold on a little bit longer, and it starts with your elbow, moving your elbow out of the way and then your body moves following that. So with this bit here, we've just done the nuki. And you can see that the, the e, ishizuki, ebu is quite long here after the last nuki. And when we strike men, you move the hand up so that it's uh, ends back in this position. Okay, so you're actually, from here, you're moving your hand forward a little bit as you strike to, to make sure that your bottom hand is, is on the correct part of the naginata, just. Um, whether after striking a man, for example, the monouchi sometimes slides up, so like that. And you see that quite a lot, but um, ideally, uh, especially from, from soku man, it should just stop without sliding up. It's just stop on, on the actual target without uh, having any exact, exaggerated sliding up motion. So that sometimes happens if your posture is not good. Um, if your posture is not good, then that means that the, the strike actually sort of doesn't come to a full conclusion properly. And that's why sometimes it sort of goes a little bit longer than what it should. Okay, so uh, correct striking is uh, not only about where you land the strike, but it's also how your body is positioned. Um, and if it's positioned correctly, then it shouldn't be sort of uh, sliding up. So, Ippomme through to Gohomme. Uh, this is like really the most fundamental techniques of Naginata for people who are just beginning and starting out. So, in Japan, uh, up to Gohomme is usually from children up to high school. Okay. Um, and when we start heading into the, the realm of roppomme, nanohomme, hachihomme, that's more mature. These are, uh, the techniques themselves are more sophisticated. And they're sophisticated not just in terms of the technical side, but the feeling that goes into it. So that's why there's a kind of um, a clear distinction that may be noticed between the first five and, and, and the last three. So the last three, if you think of them as, is a higher level of maturity in Naginata, which is why there's a, a seeming pause, but it's actually it's actually the manifestation of a of a strong fighting 
spirit and and looking for the opportunity to attack. So, uh, as I said before, if if you do uh, shikati oji the way it's supposed to be done with the correct uh, body movements, etc., etc., then everything should fall into place so that you don't need to adjust it. And then, if in the case, as you're talking about MJ, if it's a shinsa or an examination, and you find yourself in a situation where you have to adjust, that means that you're doing it wrong. So it's doesn't make any difference, you're going to fail anyway. Okay. <laughs> good. Good. Always good to clarify. Yeah. yeah. Just hope they don't notice. <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're going to wrap up the Shikaki Oji seminar here today. あの、色々皆さんもシカキオジは演技競技でなさっているので Okay, thank you very much for attending. Uh, today uh, we focused on Shikake Oji, and my understanding is that most of you already know how to do Shikake Oji, and so it didn't focus on the very small points, but just the main ones that you need to be aware of in your training. So hopefully this was useful for you and uh, that you took away some pointers that can help you with your training from now on. Thank you very much, friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.